How old are you? <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's go. Look on your hand. Oh. <laughs> cool. Cheers, man. Cheers. Thank you. It's a lot of fun. Yes. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name's Matt Lewis. And I'm Alfie Enoch. And here we are in the, uh, the room we spend most of our time when we're not busy shooting on the set of Harry Potter. Yeah, that's right, we've been hanging about in this room for about 10 years. And in that time, some of us have got to discussing what we'd like to do on a film production if we weren't actors. And this year, some of us have been very lucky to actually get behind the camera and find out exactly what goes on in these other departments. And we thought you'd like to come with us. That's right, as Dan's always found editing interesting, he got a chance to spend time with Mark Day, who was the editor for this film and The Order of the Phoenix. Get out of town. No, it's true. No, actually, get out of town. <laughs> leave. No, unfortunately, we need him. Hey, Hello man. there. How are you, Mark? I'm good. How are you? Good. Yes, very, very well, thank you. Good to see you. And thank you for letting me come up here today You're as well. Welcome. This is great. It's very exciting for me, actually. OK, so, Mark, what have, what have you been working on today? Today, I've been working on the library scene, where you talk to Hermione about who you're going to go to the party with. Now, um, I do seem to remember in, the, in that scene, when Hermione hits me, there was one take when it was very hard. Yeah. Actually. Have yeah. you got that? I'd quite I like to see that. Because you probably, you probably haven't seen that. No, no well, I, I was concussed, of course. Okay. <laughs> but I am close on one. I'm kidding. OK, sorry. Um, that really um, didn't hurt quite a lot. I'll ask someone I like. <laughs> You're laughing because you hit me so hard, aren't you? <laughs> <Yeah>. OK. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> And you really can hear the crunch yeah. of paper exactly. on bone, can't so you? So I couldn't use that one, because obviously... I'm cracked can't... up. Blimey. Ooh, <laughs> maybe she doesn't know her own strength. Oh, Dan does now. This is all very fancy here and wonderful. Yes. You've got a multicoloured keyboard, for goodness sake. So have, how long have you been avid. using computers um, for to edit? Cause... Actually, for about... Uh, it's probably about eight or nine years now. Every cut that I do, every version of a cut, yeah. I can keep. So I can always go back to right. an old cut. How do you choose when to cut away from someone. I mean, yeah, it's just instinct. You can't really teach someone that. Okay. You just look at a scene and you just think about it. You have to kind of feel as though you're the person in okay. the scene and yeah. then kind of think, when would I actually want to see the other person for, okay. for that particular line? Because that's the thing, in my head, if I was editing a scene, it would just be when one person's talking, you have the camera on. Yeah. And that's, but that's incredibly but dull to watch. Exactly, but, really but that's why how, you know, it evolves, basically. You, you, you kind of start yeah. off, maybe you start off like that. When I first start a scene, I usually overcut it. And then I'll look at it again. I'll go back and I'll look at when you say from the beginning. Cut it, well, I'll use too many shots because the director will yes. cover a scene multiple angles, yeah. as you well yeah. know. So then I start paring it down and kind of extending shots. How different is it to cut a massive action scene, say, like the fight between Dumbledore and Voldemort yeah. at the end of the fifth film, yeah. and a scene like this where you've got three or four shots in, in total? Sometimes it's actually more complicated because action scenes are really quick. Yeah. It's just a few frames here, a few frames there, and you just have to keep cutting. And whereas on a dialogue scene, you have to get the nuance of the scene. And that's the tricky thing sometimes. You, you know, where to go on you for a particular line or not to be on you for a particular line. You know, but editing is very subjective. And so what you may think is a good cut, I may not. How many times would you see this film? Oh, man. <laughs> many, many, many times. And that's also quite difficult because you actually have to kind of keep a clear head and look at it from an outsider's point of view as if you're seeing it for the first time, which is quite tricky sometimes because yeah. I've seen it 300 times. At what point would you declare a film was finished? Who, what is the last person to...? Well, we go through various processes where we show the producers, obviously, and they all have their, their say. You know, so everyone has ideas, obviously, about filmmaking, and that's why it's in, so interesting being an editor, because you're involved with the whole yeah. whole process of where it evolves over the months and months that you're working on a film yeah. of this scale. Thank you very, very much indeed, Mark. Well, thank you. Nice to see hey, you. I shall now go and shoot some more material for yes. you. <laughs> All right, thank you. How about watching the film 300 times? It almost rivals some of our biggest fans. Well, you were really lucky, weren't you? You got to go around with Tom and Ollie and check out some of the really cool special effects that they do around the set. Yeah, that was actually so much fun. I'm really looking forward to watching this. Hi, guys. My name's Matt Lewis. I play Neville Longbottom. Hi, I'm Oliver. I'm one of the better half of the Weasley twins. My name is Tom Felton, and I play Draco Malfoy. We're here with Mark from the special effects department at Harry Potter, and we're going to be learning about all sorts of things, particularly these cauldrons in front of me. What, what happens here? Oh, OK. Right, how, how, <laughs> how does that work, then? <laughs> Try that. With this? Yes. OK. You ready? OK. Nice. Ah, 
it's as simple as that. It is. <laughs> That's very cool. Just press the red button. But there's got, I mean, I mean, what, I mean... Well, uh, what we've got is, uh, we've got a bottle of um, gas and we've got a electrically operated solenoid gas valve, which is what okay. we're doing. So it's just simply opening and closing a valve. And then we've got a little tiny piece of fire lighter, which is just going and, and that's just, just there, to ignite the and gas and as it comes up. And it comes... Yeah, very it's simple. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about the knitting needles there? OK. Ah, yeah. I'm sure that might now be interesting. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's about two and a half months to make this, wow. get all the movement. And it does work accurately. It actually knits when you want it No, to. it won't. It, well, it, it actually it pretends knits. to knit. Sure, sure. But, it's it, front, but you could, I think you could get it from this. Ah, really? Yeah. OK, wow. But it would take a bit more time than the film. Yeah, yeah, sure. I thought this was all CGI, but it's not at all. I mean, well, you guys, no, it's not. You guys actually make these. Well, it's testament to good work, really. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Pocket Dan, you've been painting more than galleons, my friend. We've got, got eyes, eyes in the back, back of our heads. Last week, we were filming in, our, in the Weasley shop, uh, yeah. the Weasley Wizard's Weasley shop. Uh, and there's quite a few good things now. There's this. Okay. So if you open it, you please know, it's enlighten me. What's that? Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Oh, I like it. Yeah. yeah. It's air operated, so we can put the arrows up your arm. That looks like a great bit of fun. Yeah. Can I possibly have a quick go? I'm sure you can. Yeah. Bosh! Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that was millimeters away. <laughs> <laughs> I did notice a lovely uh, notebook here. I was hoping you could talk yes, me through absolutely. it. I believe this is Rita Skeeter, isn't it? It is. Lovely. I'll show you how it works. Fantastic, yeah, uh, I'd love to. The magnets, uh, there's a little magnet on the end of the pen. Okay, so you just sort of connect, that in. connect it into there. <laughs> you, uh, yeah, sure. Hold that. Yeah, can do. And you can pop it there. Okay. So Have you a go. that forward and it goes along. Wow. And then it. And He's you, going and back you, in the <laughs> And it flicks oh, wow. back yeah, like yeah, the time, yeah, 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 yeah. So how long would this take to construct then? Uh, that's about about three weeks to make that. Three, three weeks? That's pretty impressive. That's yeah. You've made a novel there, I think. Uh, oh, no, yeah, I can't get stuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much for this. It's been incredible. It's really opened my eyes to all the stuff you guys get up to. Thank you. We had such a great time learning about all the practical effects there that Tom met up with John Richardson, the special effects supervisor, to discuss some of the effects that were used in the bathroom scene. So, John, I hear you're the man to ask uh, about, about the bathroom scene. I'm deadly intrigued yeah. now to find out what was involved with that. Well, we did lots of things, as you no doubt saw, yeah. which included lots of warm water. I dread to think. About a thousand gallons of hot yeah, water. Yeah, I can imagine. There was a lot of water on it the day. A, but... It was very pleasant to be uh, sort of halfway through the scene and all of a sudden mm. you feel this gush of warm water <laughs> down the back of your neck. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, we could have got down there with you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, John, at the end of each take, it's a painful amount of resetting to do. Did you have some pumps? Well, we had out? pumps to get it in and pumps to get it out and dryers to dry it off. Of and course, yeah, I did see uh, those big, big tubes trying to sort of blow hot air, hot yeah. air everywhere to try and... Uh... Yeah, we, we had everything going. It was just a myriad of the usual sort of magic things we do. Sure. There was squibs, mirrors breaking, sure. pipes bursting... Lots of it. How, how did you get the mirrors to smash exactly? Because it, was, it seemed very, very orchestrated. Little compressed air devices behind them. Okay. And the mirrors were sandwiched in little plastic sheets so that you didn't get bits of mirror flying ah, everywhere. Ah, okay. But it, it was enough to crack it and smash it. Okay. But not not to not to throw it everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. Oh, very clever. So your our safety was uh, oh, was paramount. paramount. Yeah. Ah, well, I'm pleased to hear it. Pleased yeah. to hear it. John, it was definitely the most memorable scene of uh, of of my time here. So I thank you for all your hard work and appreciation. My pleasure. Let's uh, do it again on the next. Next one. Fingers crossed, let's do that. <laughs> that stuff was pretty amazing, wasn't it? Yeah, that was really cool. I'm jealous I didn't get to come with you guys. It looked like you had a lot of fun. But Jessie's also been having a lot of fun. She wanted to find out what it takes to train an owl. I love owls. They're such wise creatures. They always look so intelligent. Hi, I'm Jessie Cave. I play Lavender Brown. And um, I've been given the chance to fly an owl today, or learn to fly an owl, or try to fly an owl. This is Guillaume. And um, you're an owl expert, aren't you? Yes, I am an owl trainer. An owl trainer. How many animals are there? For the owls, we have 27 owls. Head away. There we go. How long have you been training owls? And uh, how long do they generally have to be trained for? I'm training owls, for birds, for over 12 years now. 12? Wow. Yeah, and just for the base. Like, a bird come to you and make him stay somewhere, uh, you need between one month and three months. Okay. And after, when you train to retrieve things, because owls are not the cleverest animals on the, on the really? world. No. Are they it's stupid? Whoa. Did she just ask if they were stupid? Let's replay that, please. 
Are they stupid? Take, I'm not going to say they're stupid. They're not very clever. And um, so that take a longer time. And that can take between six months and two years for a bird to learn properly how to pick up a letter and fly with. That's, That's a that. long time, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, wow. it's a big job. Yeah. What about the wise old owl? <laughs> Matt, I hate to disappoint you, but owls only look clever. Hmm. Uh, I'll give it. She's going, come on, you. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> OK, OK. The, the wind make her fly. Yeah. OK. Oh, it's very pretty. I'd like to know more about Hootie. All the actors, obviously, have um, doubles. Yes. Which is quite disconcerting. Does, say, Hedwig have a double? Yes. Really? Uh, when we shoot for one animal on a movie, you have minimum three animals behind. Wow. Because sometimes they can be sick, not feeling very well. Sometimes, if we shoot too long time, uh, the animal can be tired. So how many hours can Hootie work for before it has to go home? Uh, they can do, like, ten flies. Should we get Hootie back over here? Can he yeah. come back? No problem. Oh. Wow. Well, thank you very much for telling me all about Hootie. He's no been problem. a bit of a hoot. Despite how wise Matt may think owls are, I hear they don't make very good pets, so none of you get any funny ideas and ask your parents to buy you a pet owl for your birthday. Anyway, moving on <laughs> from flying owls to a flying Rupert. Oh. How would you like that segue? Yeah, that's impressive. Yeah, Rupert's I like what you did there. That's good, wasn't it? Yeah. Hi, I'm Rupert Grint, and this is The Stunts. Hi, right, Rupert. Nick. Welcome to uh, the stunt department. Yeah, cool. Can you remember what, what we did in the past when we've been on the trampoline and um, we've done a little, little bit of bouncing? We're going to do the same again today, but we're going to put you in a harness, OK? okay. And what, what that effective does, it, it gives you more lift and, and you can hold your position longer. Cool, yeah, that uh, sounds good. Are you happy with that? Yeah. yeah, let's do it. Now, in order to prevent very serious injury, first, Rupert, we'll have to warm up with the stunt men. Warm up? Can't wait to see this. Come on, jump! Oh, look at that hopping. What grace. Balance. Put your hands through if you can. That's incredible. Yeah. I can do that. I know for a fact I can't do that. So warm? Yeah. You ready? I'm ready, yeah. Right, we're well, just getting a touch of the harness now. Safety first. We're going to see how well he does catching the ball, being thrown at him at lightning speeds, jumping perilously high. Oh, and an excellent catch. Look at that. Spectacular. Here comes another. He looks ready. Here we go. It's oh, oh, almost oh, in the face. Oh. Almost got him in the face. Not so good. Oh, but there we that go again. Smooth. Make it look easy now. Yeah. <laughs> He's still got enough breath to talk as well. Ron's the uh, keeper in this. I've got to practice all these different saves. Chest. Slap down save. That's spectacular over there. That's liquid Quidditch. Oh, 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 oh God, no, that's got him in the face. Oh, we've got to see that's the instant replay. In Take that back. Oh, right in the face. Looks great in slow motion. Oh, he was looking so good up until that point. <laughs> Tension. Oh, oh that's a spectacular that. flip. I hope people didn't miss that at home. That is liquid trampolini. Is there anything this man can't do? I don't think so. London 2012, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's going to be Hot there. new prospect. I like this bit, of bouncy. Yeah. I don't know, it's cool. <laughs> what an athlete. I would say that is trampolining genius in action. That expertise is undeniable. It goes without saying that when a man dedicates himself to being the best, there's nothing he can't achieve. True. Now, when he did that amazing save with his face, he just kept calm and carried on. It was a mark of a real pro, it really Absolutely. was. Absolutely. Well, let's just relax as we catch up with Ivana, who uh, sat down with Janine Tamin to discuss Harry Potter wardrobe. What? No clever segue. I'm, I'm too tired, man. <laughs> Shani, she's a costume designer. Can you like describe what your day is like in costume? I read the script and then I try to think about it and I try to design uh, a costume for every character who is written in the script and the crowd as well. Even the, like the extras and everyone? Everybody. Yeah. Everybody yeah. has to wear something that we have been thinking about before. Yeah. Because they have to fit in the world of Harry Potter. Yeah and they have to make a little ensemble, give the magic to the film. When you meet the actors, do you ever change it? Yes, I do. Bit? Because you can conceive something, but then when you see it on somebody, or when you see the personality of somebody, then 
Of course, you have to adapt it to their personality. Like when I met you, I knew that you were going to bring to the costume so much more because first you had your own ideas about what you wanted to wear and also because your physical character, your long blonde hair, your tiny size, it was something that we could adapt to the costume to make it even more beautiful or yeah. more convincing. Yeah. Do you have like a favorite costume to design? Well, I, I, I really think that your character is a very interesting character yeah. because you are sort of, uh, I'm not saying you are mad, but you are full of fantasy, uh -huh. and that's always nice to do. Oh, yeah. And um, this year we had, your Christmas dress was going to look <laughs> like a Christmas tree, and it was wonderful to design, and also because you enjoyed that dress mm -hmm. very much. It, it was quite a challenge to make a dress which was that mad, yeah. and in the same time that pretty because yeah. you do look very pretty in it. And when we made that dress, we were thinking about all the jewelry that you would wear with it. And then you decided to tell me about it, because that's such a lovely story. <laughs> Everyone thinks it's a reindeer, though, so um, you can call it whatever, but it's actually her hair for her patronus. Was it difficult to make? Because you made also, last year for us, your radishes. So you make your little radishes. Mm -hmm and they were so much more beautiful than ours, so we kept yours, and you make your ring as well. Yeah. But, it's just, but it's just how like, long it takes you to make that? Um, maybe about 45 minutes. Like, the thing is, you don't have to get it perfect because it's Luna, you know, she's, she's random, she's arty, and she doesn't want it to be... Like, so you want to tell me that or... if it was not for Luna, you would have made it better than that? Perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe yeah. you, because I think it's so perfectly made, it's lovely. <laughs> and also what's nice is that with in the construction where we put it, you have the feeling that he's running, yeah, eh? that yeah. he's jumping. Yeah, but you, and that's you have really this nice. idea yeah. with the ribbon. I yes, let me see cute. it on your on your wrist. Uh -huh. Oh, look at that. Look at that, he's moving, Woo, he's jumping. <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah. I think you did such a great job with that. I was very proud of you. <laughs> so thanks for talking to me, Johnny, and tell, explaining all about the costume. And <laughs> yeah, it was a pleasure. <laughs> okay. And next year, we're going to have even more beautiful yeah. costume for you. <laughs> wow, well, Yvonne is certainly pretty handy with those beads. Yes, Alfie, they are little pieces of art. And speaking of art, let's see what Bonnie's been doing, because she spent some time in the art department. Ah, oh, brilliant. Hi, I'm Bonnie Ryan. I play Ginny Weasley. And besides acting, one of my favourite passions is art. So I'm here in the art department to show you around kind of all the different things that they've been making. All of these props are from the Weasley Wizarding Weezes. In the graphics department, they've kind of designed all specific product names that they've been coming up with for, like, the whole film. One of my favourite ones is all the, the love potions. This one's called Twilight Moonbeam, so we've all got really weird, <laughs> mad names that we're looking on on set. I spent a lot of time, about a week, in the art farm. Some of the things that I was doing was help decorate the, the Weasley house, which is quite fun to do as Kind of it was meant to be all homemade and I was actually making it. It was quite weird. When we were in the scene, I was looking around. I was like, oh, I did that. This is Eduardo, who's a graphic designer. Hi, um, Hi. we're wondering if you could show us all your amazing things. Yes. Now, some of the products, like the decoy detonator, nose biting teacup, they come from the book. J.K. Oh, Rowling, oh, she, right, yeah, yeah. She, she did that. And, but the majority of the person this year, we have to come up ourselves. Oh. Did you spend a long time thinking of all different names? Yes, but like more than 300 names. Oh my God. And <laughs> have to clear every single name before uh -huh. we do the design. How many things did you actually have to make of each? Were there so many? I think it was at least a hundred of each product. So how long did it take? Various, but I think more or less three to four days and five right. days until you show everyone and everyone approves. Yeah. Do you do all of it kind of by hand or do you do it on the computer? We tend to do a little bit by hand and computer, but uh -huh. the computer is the primary. Is the fun, yeah, is the yeah. primary thing. The Quibbler magazine. There's so many details kind of within the books. Do people get to see it all? No, but I think this is a kind of Harry Potter thing. And yeah. Stuart, he's really good on that. And everyone just follow him yeah. and Stephanie. Everything is so detailed. Yeah. So it's already now in mind that everything needs to be. Not kind of empty text. books. Yeah. No. Yeah. I can see now that there's so many different things yeah. in the film industry that I don't think people really realise are here. Oh, well, there's so many talented people working behind the scenes to make Harry Potter look as good as it does. And I mean the films, by the way, not, not Dan. He doesn't, doesn't need any talented people for that. <laughs> well, in fact, one of our very own co-stars has joined the ranks of those working diligently behind the camera. Mm, yeah, that's right, actually. James has been trying his hand as an assistant director. Or is it a production assistant? 
Well, it's it's my floor runner, really. But, I mean, you call him whatever you want. We're going to see how he's getting on. Hi, I'm James Phelps. You may know me as Fred Weasley in the Harry Potter series. However, on this film, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, I decided to change the glamorous world of in front of the camera to behind the camera, take part in the AD department. So I'm going to show you around and what I do. AD stands for Assistant Directors, so we're basically the go-betweens for every other department and make sure the actors are, are happy, make sure they're all on set on time, make sure every crew that needs to be told where they need to be are where they need to be at the time. Uh, making the whole studio pretty much work for the work for the film. I think it's personally one of the most important departments going. Just because the AD department, you get to see everyone, you, every department working, you get to know every department's characteristics and what they do. They're filming behind the scenes of the day in the life of James, which he is... That's ultimately cringeworthy for him, because of course ADs don't get filmed. It's like, I feel very sorry for him today, to be fair, but very funny nonetheless. I'm having a good giggle. <laughs> I've actually had to make my brother happy while they doing, because luckily I've been acting at the same time as he has, so I put on back on the actor side of things and get things done for me. However, when I am running, um, I have to do, obviously go and make certain members of the cast cups of tea, get them drinks, get them sweets, you know, all that kind of stuff, which is quite, I mean, I don't mind doing it, but it's quite different doing what we used to get other people to do on previous films. Yeah, I once asked James to get me a skyhook. Didn't see him for five hours. What's a skyhook? Exactly. <laughs> Joker. <laughs> you know, Rupert and, uh, and Matt do like to try and make me do a lot more than I, I maybe should. I've made some quite <laughs> ridiculous uh, requests, I suppose. Uh, James, you wouldn't mind getting me a drink there, please? Or, you know, it has to be done. We've all given a fair amount of stick, I think. Rightly so. He's, he's, he's a traitor. He's betrayed the cast. He must be punished for that. No, James has been a, he's been a valid member of the, uh, the cast for a while, and now his brother Oliver is doing the AD. It's, it's really nice to have him on set, really. It's a shame James can't be here more, because I've really grown in, like, close with Oliver over the months, and uh, it'd be good to see James when he comes back filming. The thing that we like to do to pass the time, even though we're not really supposed to, is race the golf buggies that we have here. The smaller ones are pretty slow, so my favourite is normally this big one, which is quite quick. We've got a nice causeway here, it's quite a little, nice little racetrack, so, um, yeah, I'll see you later. He's actually incredibly professional about the whole thing. I thought he'd be sort of messing around, thinking it's all right, I'm an actor as well. But he's not, he takes his job incredibly seriously. Pretty good at it. Very uh, organised and stuff and telling you what to do. I think it's great that he's actually trying to do something else, not just resting on laurels and just acting and stuff. I think it's, I think it's great. This is David Yates' chair, who's the director. So this is probably the most important chair on the set. Um, so it has to be clean and ready to be used at all times. Next to his is Bruno, who's the director of photography. He's the second most important person on the set, as he's in charge of lighting the set. Two very important chairs, guided by a very important member of the crew. <laughs> no, sorry. Sorry, Paul. Thank you. Yeah, come on, Alan. Come in now. I've just been called off to work back on set. But, you know, I hope you enjoyed my showing you around the other side of the camera. You've seen the glamorous side of the actors have. This is where the real work gets done. So, thank you very much and uh, have a good day. Matt to Alfie. I think it will be fun to talk on these all the time. Over. Yep, this is Alfie to Matt. I think it would actually get quite boring after a while. Over. You think? Over? Yeah, it's starting to get boring already. Let's just stop. Yes, this is Alfie to Matt. It's starting to get boring already. Let's stop it. Over. OK, over and up. Immature, honestly. Well, Emma's the last one up, and she chose to speak with Amanda Knight, who's the head of makeup for all six of the Harry Potter films we've had so far. Hello, uh, I'm Emma Watson, and I'm here at Leavesden with Amanda, who is our chief makeup artist and has been since film one, so from the very beginning. We're going to do a... We're going to do a dark, dark mark. mark, aren't we? We're going to do a very quick transfer dark mark. It's very simple. Put it on, and we spray it with water, and hopefully it comes out. Obviously, Emma doesn't normally have a dark mark, because she's I'm not a good. Death Eater. <laughs> I'm, on the, I'm on the right side. There we go. Ta-da. Ow. There you go. That's My dark mark. Dark mark. Meant to be hanging out for dinner tonight. <laughs> Might cover that up. Those look really cool. It's a shame we didn't get to wear those. I wanted to find out for ourselves. So I managed to get the stuff we need to hey. have a go with the tattoos. Right, come on, yeah. I'll go first. Right, OK. Let me... I think I know what I'm doing here. Do I just... Just pop it on no, there. No, you've got to peel it off first. Peel it off. Yeah, yeah it's fine. So now I just yeah. dab it. Yeah. 
I thought you knew what you were doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Honestly, don't be so be careful, bossy. Be careful. I am being careful. Look at this. This is wonderful. So I've, got, I've got the touch. It's going to look great. What is that? Not as good as I'd hoped. It's supposed to be easy. Yeah, I know, but it's, it's not. Amanda, what was okay. your biggest makeup challenge this year? I would say Tattoo Man, which has been thrown into us at the last minute. We had to adapt the designs lightly. Some of them we had to hand draw on. So that was the final result. That's absolutely incredible. How long does it take it to do? It took four makeup artists, probably five hours. I think one of my funniest moments on this film was Dan and Rupert, who kind of played a trick on me, which was that in Nocturne Alley, which is kind of like the dodgy area of Diagon Alley, and they just said, Emma, go and, go and take a look in, uh, in that shot window. So <laughs> I went and pulled back the curtain, and there was this man uh, and what I thought, at a brief glance, was basically practically naked and just covered <laughs> in tattoos, just sat there in this chair in this, like, tattoo parlour in Diagon Alley. And my face, cos Dan and Rupert obviously knew that how I was going to react, were both just sat there just <laughs> laughing, laughing, laughing at me. It's quite embarrassing. Well, I think we can give Tattoo Man a run for his money, eh? You look ridiculous. Says you. I don't look ridiculous. Don't know what you're on about. This is quite embarrassing, but... We were, well, I mean, I was nine when I first auditioned. I was probably about 10, 11 when we first started filming. And I remember like getting for... an emergency phone yeah. call saying that you'd lost a front I, tooth. Yeah, it was one of like, it was one of these very, very front teeth. And I had to wear a kind of like a... a little piece like with a, a tooth. Yeah. How there. embarrassing is that? <laughs> This was something that Amanda made me for my 18th birthday. And um, you very sweetly, she got everyone to write me a little message. But what's really interesting is what's on the other side, which is the <laughs> continuity photographs from the very, very first film. So this is what we all used to look like. And it's absolutely hysterical if you just look like, if look I look at, at my difference hair, look now. How pale. And Bonnie, and Tom, Jamie, Josh. This is how I first remember you coming in for your screen tests. So weird. And Rupert. Very strange. And Dan, look at them all. I think it's Rupert and Matt who've changed the most. Yes. Yeah. That's so embarrassing. My eyes aren't even open in that picture. What are you talking about? Uh, the picture Emma just showed, it's, uh, my eyes are closed. But what, we're meant to be saying our goodbyes now. I don't think it matters. Just say goodbye to the people. It's, uh, I'm always going to be remembered now as the bloke who had his eyes closed on Emma's birthday card. It doesn't really matter. I'm sure you'll get over it, yeah? Plus, nobody would have noticed if you hadn't pointed it out just now. Oh, great. Honestly, come on, let's say goodbye, yeah? Bye. Bye. You can do better than that. That was flat. Come on, get some energy. Do you need a moment? OK, no, it's fine. Let's do it. Sorry. Bye. Bye. Much better. Thanks. Yeah. Alfie to Matt, I think we should talk like this all the time. Over. Alfie to Matt, I'm Alfie and I'm you're Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Dedicate a bed bed bed. It's always bringing me down. I think we give to <laughs> look a bit like that. <laughs> Game face on. Oh, Just blimey. Dignified. I'm Ooh. trying to talk. Yes, he has. Was that a bit of a sorry? That was so good. <laughs> I just stumbled on the way. <laughs> <laughs> this has got to stop. <laughs>